This is on back at it with another book review. And today I'm going to show you three books that came in the mail, um, each at different times and some that I was using. And these books are mostly for my um, classes that I'm going to be taking um, this upcoming se semester after um, the break. I only have, have a, one more week of break and then I'm back to school. Um, all right, well, let's get started. And um, before I get, you know, before I start more, um, start with the first book. Um, I was just saying that these books are mostly just it's a combination of physics and, you know, math classes. Obviously, the again, they're the books that I'm, you know, using for the first uh, semester. But um, at the end, um, I'll show you a problem from one of the books. And it's probably going to be from the first book here, which is The Physics of Vibrations and Waves. And the title is called Just Vibrations and Waves by Dorsey King. And this book is really good for um, just learning the basics of vibrations and waves. And if we get into the nitty gritty of it, right? Um, this is a really good book. Um, it's recommended by like literally all was recommended by my physics uh, professors and my um, my friends to get this book. So um, you know, and it was in um, our quote unquote physics library. So I wanted the copy for myself um, and have a book in my collection, of course. So this is the contents table of contents here, and you know. Um, it just shows you, you know, a couple of the chapters. So it starts off with basic simple harmonic motion. So the stuff that you learn in calculus, uh, not in calculus, but uh, physics one. And, um, you know, it goes on from there and then gets more in depth with it. So obviously, right, um, you learn, you know, uh, simple harmonic motion in physics one. And you learn, uh, you know, all the other stuff, the basics, how to do the algebra. But you never learn it as a differential way, right? You never learn it um, as a differential equation. And that's what this book does. It's mostly a differential equation based, while, you know, physics one and two are more algebra and like baby calculus based, right? So this one gets into the nitty gritty and trying to understand like where your math level skills are. And the thing too with this is that um, um, this book, really starts to get um, into the major of physics. And um, this is why, you know, it's very important that, you know, you start knowing, you know, you start getting, you know, some, some of those tools that you learn from Calc 1 to 3 um, are going to be, you know, more progressing if you are a physics major, of course, you know, more progressing as you go on to the higher level physics. And that's the thing, you know, with math and physics, you know, they're not the same. They rely on each other, but they're not the same. And um, yeah, this book is really good. So I'm gonna show you ex exactly, you know, a couple of stuff. It's a really good read. Um, I was working on it a couple of weeks ago uh, when I got this book and, you know, it has been pretty good ever since. Um, here's go like one of the, it gives you example problems of the book and it just goes on from there, like how to solve the problems and how to approach them. You know, as you see, it's, it's really fun. You know, it's vibrations and waves. So, um, let me show you the questions. Here's the, sorry, I'm just like flipping through show you like where the problems are. Oops, nope, that's not the right one. That's not the right one. So you think it's right here. Oh, they're right. All right. So here's the problems, right? And um or they're on this side. Well they're, they're a combination on this side and this side. And they go they give you a pretty hefty amount of problems. And what they do is give you the odd number problems which is uh, the solutions here, right? And here, here are your solutions. And Alyssa, I think they give you all the problems actually, which is very interesting and, and very good that they give you all the problems. So 
yeah, the solution to all the problems. And, you know, look, looking at it, it's a thin book. So I'm guessing they're like, huh, we, you know, it's a thin book. So we're going to surprise you with giving you all the answers to it. Um, it looks like they don't really give you like an in-depth um, answer as I've been um, going through it. it. Looks like they just give you the straight up answer basically you know what are you supposed to get and some of those answers are kind of straight off but some of it is not and um you know sometimes they may they may bother me if i'm like really challenge on a, like a really challenged problem but you know it is what it is and um yeah so you know here's some other you know examples of the solutions here you can see i'm not the page kind of bent but yeah all right, let's go on to the next one. So again, this is uh, Vibrations Away by George C. King. Um, highly recommend if you are either taking a course now or going to in the, in the future, you know, you know, for a physics major. All right, let's move on to the next one. And I believe I didn't have those out. I think I put them away because I had to record this again. Alright. Alright. So the next one is uh, partial differential equations for engineers, for scientists and engineers. You know. Alright. And this book I just got yesterday, so I did not really read this one so it's gonna be just an interesting book you know i skimmed through it yesterday so i didn't really get you know and too involved in it but you know i know what a partial pd is and i know what a you know ode i've taken i've taken um odes but i use this book um well i grabbed this book because one i want to know what the hell um you know how to solve a pd problem and basically want to know um what the hell a, a pd is i mean i know what it is but like you know i know what it is but like this like this is different between knowing and solving problems for them and actually applying it to like a field or something like that so this is why i got the book um also i'm doing research astrophysics research so you know if i get across a problem or something like that i may can look in this book and it may not be that much help for that but like you know some stuff that i would see in the book you know or see in my astrophysics research might help me understand what you know like if there's a pde problem you know in the astrophysics research um i can try to see you know if it can help me out in some sort of way you know use this more as a reference obviously so um we're gonna go through this together because um and this is a dover book right so this is partial differential equations um, for scientists and engineers by Stanley J. Farlow. And I'll put the links uh, to these books below. And the, you know, first it gives you an introduction to what a PDE is, and which is what I love, right? Here's your introduction of what a PDE is. And, you know, as you can see, there are different types of PDE. So um, there's the, they give you the, the main like known PDEs, which is a heat equation. The wave equation and the plus equation, right? And then they give you the types. So um, the types are, you know, uh, parabolic, hyperbolic, and elliptic. And then they give you uh, the difference between linear and non-linear um, PDEs. They also tell you uh, another way how to solve them. So separation of variables, integral transforms change of coordinates, transformations of dependent variables, um, nu numerical methods, right? Uh, permutation methods, um, impulse response technique, integral equations, right? I have a book on that as well, integral equation, which is a very interesting topic. And uh, eigenvalues and calculus of variation methods. So, you know, it's a really good book um, from my standpoint of just looking at it, uh, skimming through it. It looks, they give you, you know, some problems to it. It's very, um, the book is, I like this um, textbook kind of feel. Um, it doesn't just get straight to the, you know, which is what I like too as well. I love getting straight into the math, but sometimes when you get straight into the math, it gets, you know, kind of rigorous. Um, 
So yeah, uh, this is a really good book. Um, here's the lesson two on diffusion problems, right? And um, they give you like a really good understanding. And let me show you the problem. So these are the problems, right? So this is the start of the problems. And it's really nice how this book uh, formats in that way. And uh, let me show you some questions. Yeah, so lesson two, right? That shows you a question that those are the answers to lesson two questions. And they're selected questions too. So selected questions are not always the best because they quote unquote select the problems, which is okay. But, you know, I get that this is a big book. So they're trying to, you know, uh, keep it all, you know, equally together. And this is the used book too. I got this for like $5 on eBay. Um, as you can see, there's like, you know, wear and tear on the book, you know, stuff like that. Um, so it is, it is a used book. And, um, you know, I am a fan. Not, I you know, I just started doing the, um, the used books thing. So I've always been a fan of like the new book, but, you know, times are rough right now. So we're going to have to go with the used books. Um... And I kind of like the used books. I mean, like, they're the same content and it is nothing different. It's just the book is huge. I mean, yeah. It's like, you know, wear and tear. I'm not really too uh, crazy about it. I mean, it looks like, I mean, you know, you can see the peeling of it, this and that. But, you know, I'm going to ruin it anyway. Like, you know. So, yeah. That's uh, Partial Differential Equations. Um, really good book um, so far. Um I'm pretty sure, and they give you like, you know, other Dover books too. Dover books are really affordable books. Um, again, you can also find this, you know, online too, PDF if you want to, right? They're all, you know, all the books I'm showing, I'm pretty sure I, I found them free online, PDF. All right, let's move on to the next one. All right, so we have Complex Variables by Stephen D. Fisher. Now I wanted to say another thing. Um, I probably could do one on Alphers as well. I had Alphers for a while, um, for a couple months now. Um, I had Alphers, and I'm gonna say this. So the difference between um, this book and Alphers is Alphers a little bit more rigorous, and the reason why it's a little bit more rigorous because it's for people who really understand complex analysis and your real analysis. And when I mean by real analysis, I mean by doing proofs and logic and stuff like that. Um, the thing is, is that, um, Alphers is very, is ve again, very, very rigorous because, you know, it's, um, and it's more for graduate level complex analysis. Well, this one right here, Complex Variables by St Stephen D. Fisher, it comes out with an introduction to what complex, um, analysis is, and then it's strictly variables, complex variables. So you're going to be learning a lot about, you know, functions, how, you know, you do uh, calculus on the complex plane, how you graph on the complex plane. So basically, you're going to be focused mostly on the complex plane. While uh, complex analysis, you are doing uh, basically everything, a total, a, everything of complex analysis, of complex uh, analysis, right? So everything with uh, imaginary real and imaginary numbers, how they're going, um, how they're going to with each other. And, you know, it does say this uh, textbook is intended for undergrad and graduate students, right? As you can see, uh, undergrad and graduate students or graduate students, right? So um, it's really to a general audience of mathematicians, engineers, computer scientists, or uh, physicists, you know, all those STEM uh, people, right? And it, this really shows you, um, you know, it starts off with like, I would recommend this if you're taking an undergrad course for complex uh, analysis or, you know, a graduate course in complex um, analysis. Um, but this book, I tell you, is strictly complex variables. Um, if you're learning more, if you want to learn more about complex analysis, I recommend doing uh, a book by Alphers. And that should help you out more better than this book. 
Um, here is the, I do not have alphas with me. I should have brought it with me, but here's the book for complex variables by Stephen D. Fisher. And this is the table of contents. And, you know, as you can see, it starts off with a complex plane, you know, trying to figure out what, uh, what a complex number is, you know, deciphering the difference between imaginary parts and real parts, uh, you know, limits. They even start off with the line and rule and green stand. And this book, this format, and that's why I'm saying uh, this book really just do, does complex variables. While alphas, they really break down and has a better set of like what's, you know, knowing. Um, for me as well, you know, um, if you looked at my other video, um, I got accepted to take that class for complex analysis, a graduate level course. And, um, you know, I'm still an undergrad. So I said, I'm just going to take the challenge and see how it goes, you know, for the class. I can always drop, the, you know, I can always drop the class, you know, for that two week period. So, you know, we're going to see how it goes, um, which is why I got these books and started studying on my own time to, you know, understand what, you know, the stuff behind, you know, complex analysis and trying to understand how these things work out. So for this book that I've been reading um, so far, you know, it does, it, it's, it's a better, it's a better read than Alpha's. I will say that, like, it's better as in uh, easy to read. And because it's, you know, it's a general approach on how to, you know, approach the problems of complex uh, numbers and, and uh, variables. And um, I really like it because it shows you two examples on how to do the problems. Unlike uh, Alphers, it shows the examples, but it's very complicated. Like it's, and it's a small book too, right? So, and it's very, it's very complicated to read. And they give you more problems than um, Alphors get. Alphors gives you, and uh, I think too they uh, this book actually gives you it gives you the odd numbers to the problems, and it gives you step-on-step uh, -step problems on how to do them too as well. So this one is a really really good. Like one of my favorite ones was when it was doing the integral. Yeah, this one right here for number eleven does the whole green stem integral there for you. And, um, you know, it's really good. And I really like uh, how they uh, write out the answers to these problems. So it's really, it's really, really nice. Um, I do recommend this if you are taking complex variables or a, a complex analysis for your undergrad course. Um, it's a really good read. I will do uh, one of the, uh, I will do alphas later on. I'll probably add it into my next video for the upcoming other books that are come for the upcoming video for the other books that are coming up. Um, yeah, and you know a, another thing too is that this gives off also the what is it called the um, it's like a, a reference sheet right um, which I really enjoy. I love when books give off like a little reference sheet. Um, which I didn't really see in Alphers. I have to look at Alphers again, but it's been a little, it's been a quite a, some time since I looked at Alphers. But um, here's a little reference sheet of the mappings. Um, really nice. I'm showing you how the mappings work, and that's what I really like about that. Um, you know, and here's a table of contents for Laplace transforms, right? If you know what a you know know what a Laplace transform has to do with uh, differential equations, right? And with here you're doing imaginary parts with the Laplace, right? So you know if you have like one over I guess some imaginary part where like x squared plus one, you can break it up into x plus i, x minus x plus i, x minus i, right? And that's where you um, can figure out there. Figure out the stuff there. But yeah, it's really good. It has the solutions to the odd number problems. And yeah, I really like this book um, so far. Um, I think it will help me out. This book was also re um, was also recommended to me from my professor. So this is why I definitely got it because he was saying, I'm really gonna like just go on from this book. Uh, the professor who's teaching that graduate level complex analysis class. But I already had alphas for a while. So I, you know, I feel like alphas really is gonna prepare me more 
than this book does. So um, we'll see how it goes. He did say like he wasn't going to cover over everything in complex analysis. But, you know, we'll see how it goes. And I think, that, but I think this book will be great practice for someone who is, you know, trying to learn what the general approach of how to, you know, do complex analysis or complex practice. All right. And um, basically, that is it for all the books. Um, I promised you guys that I would do one of the problems for Vibrations and Wave. And um, I would do that. So, um, yep. Yeah. All right. So here's the problem that I uh, promised you guys that I'll show how to um, work through. This is a mass of 0.75 kilograms is attached to one end of the of a horizontal spring of spring constant 400 uh, newtons per meter. The other end of the of the spring is attached to a rigid wall. The mass is pushed so that at time t equals zero, it is four centimeters closer to the wall than the equilibrium position and is traveling towards the wall with a velocity of 0.5 meters per second. Determine the total energy of the oscillating system. Um, so that's part A. And B is obtain an expression for the displacement of the mass in the form x equals a cosine of omega t plus phi meters, um, giving the numerical values for a, w, a, omega, and phi. So, um, let's go ahead and um, figure that out, right? So the first thing that I recommend, right, is basically trying to have um, the form out already. So having the form, or so you know, understanding, you know, where x of t is equal to a cosine of omega t plus phi, right? And it would be, you know, the same thing as saying a cosine of omega t plus b sine of omega t, right? And the reason why the b is zero, you know, b is equal to zero because there is um, no angular velocity. That's why B is zero. You know, if B is zero, then that whole, you know, expression is zero. So what's the next thing? Well, the next thing would be to uh, figure out, let's draw a little, um, let's draw a little, um, little picture depicting it, actually. And we have a little spring here, the little mass, right? And then we have our k value. And I think the best thing to list out is, you know, your mass, which your mass is 0.75 kilograms, right? So you have to keep going back and forth to the problem. K is 400 um, Newton per meter. Um, and then we have our x position, right? When x is zero, it's four centimeters or 0 0.04 meters, right? It's probably good to change it into its, into its um, SI units, right? The correct SI units. And then we know that its velocity, right, is 0.5 meters per second. All right? All right, so we have that um, all set it out. And so the first one is determining the total energy of the oscillating system. So the total energy, right? So if you look through the book, the total energy, remember, is the potential energy plus the kinetic energy. And that is equal to one half Ka squared. I'm not gonna go over, uh, you know, why it's one half Ka squared, but it's, it's one half Ka squared for the total energy with the potential plus the kinetic. All right, now all we need to do, right, is figure out, you know, 
what the hell A is, basically. So all we know, right, we, all, we only know 400 A squared, right? One half of 400 A squared. And we can just say that's 200 A squared. So that's our total energy. And what we need to figure out is figure out what A is. So A, right, as we know, A, right, is what is in our equation for our, you know, solution to the differential equation of oscillatory oscill motion, right? So A cosine of omega C plus 5. Sorry, I can't talk today. <laughs> it's very... <laughs> this is my first time doing um, one of these problems, so, you know, I'm kind of nervous, but... You know, um, I always had you know a little bit of trouble with my speeching, my speech. So give me, you know, <laughs> please be uh, patient when I speak. Um, all right. So we have x of t is equal to a cosine of omega t plus five. And what we know is our initial position, right? Our initial position is x of zero, which is. Um, Four or point, let's change that to point zero four, right? Point zero four meters, right? And that's when the time, right, is zero. So that's zero plus five, right? And um, what we do is then we want to look at our velocity. So velocity was point five, right? And the same thing, that would be sine, and there was a negative as well when we take the derivative, right? So, um, you know, just in case you don't know, you know, x is, as you can see, you can go on from here. x is, x of t is a cosine of omega t, while x dot is negative a sine. Of, oh, oops, chain rule, W sine of omega t plus 5. All right. So let me not forget that W then. So then, right, I'm going to go over here to the side. We have 0 0.04 is equal to A cosine of phi, and we have 0.5 is equal to negative a w of sine of phi. And um, basically what we can do to change this, we can go ahead and divide that w, right? And we know that w is equal to the square root of k over m. And k over, k over m, right, our k value was 400, our m value was 0.75. So then that's going to give us 23.094 radians per second. And what we can do now is plug in that answer. So then we have 0 0.04, and you see why I do this, right? A cosine of phi, and then we have 0.5 divided by that 23.094, which is equal to negative a sine of phi. And this is why I do this, because I divided out the w. And then once we do that, we can square those, right? And then you'll see a little, you know, if you know trigonometry, see a little neat trick, right? I'm assuming you know trigonometry and your uh, trig identities. And we get that this is 0 .000468. Um, and that would be oh wait, no, no, no point four six eight. What is that? That's bring out my calculator. It's zero point five divided by twenty three point zero nine four. What is that? Oh, there it is. Okay. I think I typed in an extra two in my other calculator. Two, one, six, eight, eight is equal to A 
or negative a sine of phi. And then what you're going to do, right, is you're going to square it. So squaring it, this becomes 0 0.0016 is equal to a squared cosine squared of phi. And we got 0 0.0000468. If as I'm looking at my calculator. Yep, 468 sine squared of phi. All right. Now, what we're going to do is um, add those up together, right? So when we add those up together, this becomes 0 0.0016 plus 0 0.0048, 468 is equal to a squared cosine squared of phi plus a squared sine squared of phi. And then what we can do, we can just add those together so that becomes point zero zero two zero six eight. And what I can do is factor out an a squared and look at that. We get our fancy, you know, trig identity. And I just love this trig identity. This is one of my favorite trig identities because it just becomes one. Zero two zero six eight is equal to a squared times one. Right? Then we're going to take the square root of that. So A is equal to 0 0.04545 meters. I like to like write out all the digits for mine. So like, you know, the answer is like approximately around the same answer. Then we get E is equal to 1 half 400 times 0 0.04545. Four seven five squared, right? Because that's what our a is. So we're going back, right, to what we said here. So two hundred squared, right? We said that was two hundred times point zero four five four seven five squared. So let's see what that is. Two hundred times point zero four five four seven five squared. I'm using two calculators right now. Okay. And that comes out to be um, where the energy is 0 .0, 0 0.41. What was the answer? 0 0.413595. So then, you know, rewriting the energy. Energy is point four one three five nine five joules of energy which is the total amount of energy and let's see what the book says in the book as i'm confirming with the book right now is the dang book saying yeah okay so the book says let's say in red book answer is um, 0.41. And as you can see, that's the same, you know, answer there. All right. Let's work on uh, the next one. So the next one, right, is uh, 1.5b. And that was just saying, uh, so this is answer A. Let me make sure I put answer A. Let's work on B. We'll work on B on the next page. So B, right, just tells us to put it in. It's pretty easy, right? So B is, you know, we go back to this form here, A cosine of omega t plus phi. The only thing that we need to figure out is how to figure out what phi is. So we're trying to figure out what phi is. And um, we already know what W is, and we already know what A is, so let's go ahead and continue. So we got point, let's, let's go back to the point four is equal to A cosine of phi. And um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to distribute that negative out, right? So I'm, I'm going to say this is negative point zero two one six five, right? 
because I think that's what we got from or six eight. Is it six eight? Yeah, six eight. Sorry. Yeah, six eight. Was it six eight eight? Yep, six eight eight. Is equal to a sine of phi, and then I'm gonna go ahead and say, all right, well that's negative point two one six eight eight divided by um, point zero four, right? We're gonna divide this time, and the a's cancel, right? So let me just uh, write that out. So the sine of phi all over a cosine of phi and the a's cancel and then you know if we know another trig identity that is just sine divided by sine so that's negative 0.21688 divided by 0 0.04 and that becomes negative 5.422 is equal to tangent of phi and let's go ahead and take the arc tangent of that so the inverse tangent of negative 5.422. So as I know, the arc tangent of negative 5.422. Make sure your your calculator is in radians, um, which it is. Is it in radians? Oh, oh my gosh. Did I? <laughs> I'm missing a, a, a zero. That's what I was like looking at. I was like, that doesn't look right. <laughs> yep, I am missing a zero. I'm sorry about that, folks. Sorry. All right, there we go. I was like, yeah. So we were, we're off by a factor of 10. There we go. Arc tangent of negative point five four two two is equal to phi, and then that answer right. Um, let me change that in the calculator. Phi comes out to be negative point four nine six eight three five, right? And um. You could leave it like this, but let's say we wanted to put it in another quadrant, right? It's, it's giving us a negative angle. So let's uh, figure out what that coterminal angle is. So this is this is the coterminal. Let's figure out what the reference, you know, by reference angle, that coterminal, this is the, you know, what that coterminal ang angle is. And we're just going to add 2 pi to this. So we're going to say we're going to add 2 pi radians. Is still going to be equal to, which is 2.65 radians. All right. And this is something more, you know, pleasing. So we got phi, you know, we got A, we got uh, W, and we got phi, right? So, so we got A, we got W, and we got phi now. So now we can set up our equation. So X of T is equal to our a value, which we said was 0 0.045, right? Plus two five. Mm. Cause I'm getting five point. I shouldn't be right. Maybe it's plus. No, maybe it's plus pi. Is it plus pi? 
Oh, plus pi, not 2 pi. I'm sorry. Plus pi radians. All right. So this becomes for our a value, which we said a was 0 0.045. Um, and this will be cosine of um, 23.094t, which we said was our A value, right? Not A value, for W. Make sure, let me get that out of the way. So I'm just going back and forth, just trying to make sure everything is correct. And then this would be plus 2.65 radians. All right. So we got our equation there. And let's see what our uh, solution is. So the book gives us, what does the book give us? The book gives us this kind of rounds off. So the book answer. Gives us um, yeah, so that's the book answer. So, you know, our answers are pretty similar. All right, and that's it pretty much. And, you know, um, Again, I'll, I'll see you guys in the next video. I just wanted to show you a quick example from the book of the physics, physics of waves and um, vibrations exercise. And yeah, I'll see you guys later. And I'll uh, make a video on the other books that are coming in the mail soon. Thank you for watching. Goodbye.